Good morning. How's it going? Good morning. How's it going? I'm pretty good. How are you? <laughs> the moment a camera is brought up. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to make a vlog because a lot's come about in my life recently. And um, I wanted to discuss it with myself and anyone who was interested in listening. Plus, I'm aware it's been a really long time since I've done an actual vlog on my channel. It's probably been like four or five months. So I think I deserve to put one up. Firstly, I'm actually in talks with someone about getting an internship at a local music school. I'm not gonna say which one because I don't wanna cause any breach of privacy, but um, he really likes me and he likes my voice and he likes my music and he likes my um, theoretical knowledge. So that's a plus. It's really nice to know that there are opportunities for me who, um, who I'll get into that point in a, in a, in a second, but um, it's really nice to know that there are opportunities for me to put myself out there and be useful to people in a way that isn't, you know, so readily stardom, so to speak. You know, it's nice to just be available as I am to people. So I hope it works out. He was really pleased with my range. <laughs> Next, I want to acknowledge that I actually gave Brookdale, my community college, a final shot. And um, that was very last minute of me to do. I um, wasn't really planning on going back. Um, in August of this year, I wasn't planning on going back until right near the end of it. And it was out of, um, you know, a real behest of my, um, my parents who mean very well to, to go back. But in the end, what happened is I actually left last month because I, um, I mean, technically I'm still enrolled, but I dropped out of both of the classes. I dropped both of the classes I was taking. Yeah, I was only taking two classes because I'm, I wasn't that committed. Um, and uh, I'm actually really proud of myself for doing that because it was a statement to myself of what I'm seeking in life and affirming that and knowing that I'm gonna do what I need to do to get where I wanna be. So I'm proud of myself as far as that. Now a question in corollary to that is, what do I wanna be? Well, I think more importantly to answer it is what I am. I see myself and know myself as an artist who has, you know, her um, occasional flubs, you know, I will get into that point as well in a second, because um, something happened. But um, I recognize the intention, skill, vision, even integrity, visual, visionarily, visionary integrity, so to speak. Like I, I'm very clear on what I want in a piece and I'm very steadfast in pursuing that and achieving that. Whether it be a piece of music or a piece of poetry or an essay even, you know, or even a role I'm playing, I'm very clear on how I want to achieve it, what I feel is right for it. And even if someone is telling me, you know, to go a certain way, I'll consider that and I'll put it together that way in some ways. <laughs> oh, um, I used to be really good at public speaking, but I'm a bit unsteady with it now. But this is good practice. So yeah, I mean, what I want to do as far as what I am, current projects are an album they will be out in February, and a memoir that will hopefully be out in June. The memoir is currently at 46,000 words, and the album is at six tracks out of, I believe, 12 I want to make for the album. So um, yeah. I'm happy with that, and I've been doing shows when I can, so. And also I um, have been seeking um, acting um, roles again. I had um, two roles this year already, and might have a third one coming up because I've been seeking again. And I got um, recruited to audition for another one just two days ago, just yesterday actually, so. We'll see what happens. You have to keep putting yourself out there. And what I realize now is just the importance of self-belief. I didn't recognize that before. Um, probably this year, maybe last year. So um, that I'm grateful for. 
the thing that happened as far as my art um, is that while performing two weeks ago, I had um, a meltdown on stage. I had two performances that week, so actually one of them went pretty well. For what it was worth, at least. I had to... I had a, I did a poem beautifully, but um, I had to do three takes of a song because I got so overwhelmed with myself that I couldn't perform it at first. The third time around, I performed it actually rather well. But it was the third time around. <laughs> you know, I, I couldn't get through more than 30 seconds of the other takes. So... So at least I wasn't like I was performing a whole song over and over again. That's not what it, what happened. But yeah, on um, two Wednesdays ago, I had a meltdown on stage at a Halloween open mic um, in Long Branch. And um, it was quite embarrassing for me because it had been months since I had an actual outburst at someone or at all. Um, I mean, I got angry at times, but it wasn't like some real event, you know, and I had events, you know, um, I've had them in many years past, but I also had one, a couple, namely actually in the summer, because back then I was really conflicted over my voice and stuff, so yeah, um, but, uh, actually this, um, this open mic, I had a lot of conflict over whether I could sing properly as I wished to, you know, with um, the placement that I currently use and regularly use and all that stuff and it brought me to real um, helplessness and um, what happened was I, while performing um, a song called If I Am, I smashed my keyboard, not to disrepair, but I smashed it pretty vigorously and um, I ran off yelling, I, wa I, I walked off the stage yelling, get out, get out, to myself, get out. I don't know if it was clear that it was to myself, but it was to myself that I was yelling that. And, um, yeah. I just realized how drab this outfit must look. It's like, it's a pajama top. And this is, um, a, uh, cardigan. <laughs> it's like, it just looks really drab to me. But it's all right, it's already been done. And here comes yet another moment where I question my, um, whether I ask myself if I'm being vain, you know? I have learned to not be okay with talking about myself, at least not readily okay with it. Um, and uh, I recognize it as a trauma response. Of what traumas? Well, I guess I haven't had conventionally thought of things as traumas. Um, but you can look through my videos and see what I mean as far as trauma. I mean, just look through. I won't even get so specifically into it. And if you don't know, now you know. I'm taking back the crown. I'm all dressed up and naked. See what's mine and take it. Oh, oh yeah. I am doing another show though. Um, later this month on the 18th. It's been pushed back a couple times, but um, it's going to be at Ghost Harbor Creative in Asbury Park on the 18th. It's poetry and music. I've been kind of doing mainly performances like that with poetry and music involved, and um, I'm really looking forward to it. So, yeah. Don't look back. They're watching you. And then also... Um, so actually in September, I had a relationship with someone. I was, I had a girlfriend and um, it lasted into early October. It was very pleasant, but ultimately I had a lot of doubts while in most of the relationship. And um, it drove me to the point where I wasn't sure if I could um, ingenuously, um, genuinely, be with her because I, well, let me, let me do another clip. Well, I admired her a lot and still do, and I really wanted to care for her. Um, and I found her really distinct in many ways. Her as a person, body, mind, and soul. But at the end of the day, for much of the relationship, I wasn't particularly attracted to her. 
and this really caused a stir in me because I wasn't sure then what to do. Um, to me, it seemed like the best thing to do was to disband, to break up. Um, it's kind of weird calling it a breakup after only a month or so, but um, it really kind of was, I guess. <laughs> um, as good as it was, there were a lot of systematic flaws that went wrong with it, now we conducted ourselves. Things went really fast and there was like a new stepping stone we reached like with every week, every few days in the relationship. And it was kind of like a whirlwind, you know? And it was the first relationship I'd had of even that length. Um, it was actually, yeah, the longest relationship I'd ever, had, I'd ever had, except for maybe one I had in high school. That was kind of gray for the first few weeks, but I met with her twice. In terms of number of dates though, this is the longest one. We met eight times, um, so there is that. And of course we weren't just meeting, we also had, you know, calls on the phone and texting and all that stuff. So it was a lot. And on top of that, on many instances, on many instances, we were very physically intimate. Now, who was she? She was very kind, I'm not saying her name. She was very kind and very intelligent, had a lot of trauma in her past, um, was mother to um, a daughter um, who is like six or seven years old. She's She's 28, she's not that old, but and she doesn't look that old either, she looks much younger. She even looks younger than me. But um, she, uh, at least in some lights. <laughs> and um, she was a widow um, to, uh, well, she, so the weird thing is her husband, uh, would-be husband, passed away two weeks before they planned to wed each other in a ceremony. He had a brain aneurysm and um, passed away abruptly. I can only imagine. And on top of that, on top of this, her house burned down, her childhood home burned down um, around the same time, like maybe a week or two later. Seriously, all this happened. There was another tragedy that happened, I think, around that time as well. I think it might have had to do with her grandfather passing away or something. But, um, there was, there was so much tragedy. And that, combined with the childhood trauma that she endured, um, namely from her mother, um, I guess I have to ask who wouldn't be moved by this. Combined with the resolve and resilience she's displayed through and through as someone who doesn't even get to call herself a widow technically because her husband died too soon. Um, among other things. You know, it's heartbreaking. But it's also inspiring because of the sun the morning sun. Uh, but yeah, certain physical features, um, partly related to her trauma, in fact. Um, but namely, her, um, she had a lot of issues with her teeth. Um, this, uh, it was just hard for me to get through that, um, and I am so, it's an annoyance because should it really matter that, you know, or the fact that her body is kind of boyish or androgynous, you know, um, mine is too, I guess, in some ways, I don't know. <laughs> Gee, I wonder why, um, should that really have turned me away? thing is it's not about a should it or should it have should it not have it it just did and I found myself at difficulty in committing it became effortful and by the end of it I actually started to compensate I had read this very heartfelt letter to her that I'd written 
at whim just before calling her. And um, it used the L word a lot. <laughs> um, and it basically described everything I found good about her. And um, this was a month in, Huns. This is a month in. And um, I read that to her. She immediately said, Aww. Kind of putting me on a pedestal. You know, she said something to the effect of that. And um, soon enough, she found it hard to really be okay with that letter. Because, yeah a lot of pressure on someone to perform at that level of you know where they where you still think that where the other person still thinks that you are a really decent person and um also to feel as though you have to reciprocate that because you're in a relationship together that's a lot and like I knew it was a lot as I was reading it like the moment I started reading it I recognized how grave this was, <laughs> um, how profound this was. And um, the thing is though, it was initially meant to be a breakup letter I was gonna read because I felt like, how can I respectfully still be in this if I can't even find myself committed to it? I think underneath that lies the issue of, you know, two weeks passed before we called it Facebook official. Yes, yeah, not just official, Facebook official. I mean, we were fast about being okay with us being together as in that way. But two weeks, you know, and it was public. And, um, you know, of course, another two weeks later, yeah, it um, fell apart. Two and a half weeks, whatever. Because, yeah, I mean, the, the whole thing felt very good the first two weeks. But once things were locked in, I panicked. I was like, can I really be with this person? Call her mine, you know? Th that was difficult for me. And it's going to be difficult for anyone to come to think. And um, I think she found it difficult too because she said that, you know, ultimately she felt things were rushed too. This is a lesson for me to learn, especially someone with BPD or with BPD traits, that um, it's sometimes play out on stage. <laughs> um, that uh, clinging to someone not the way. Now granted, I don't think I cling, I clung to her so much, but I was quite eager in being a rock for her and her being a rock for her, having her be a rock for me. You know, I was very eager with that stuff. And that's one thing that I think was not best in how it played out. And as strong as its base was, I do think it's over. I do think it's, like, it's it's a relic now, you know, like I have to be okay with that because it's been five weeks. <laughs> um, she was very good and very good to me. And she probably thinks the same of me actually. But if things are gonna rush that fast, how are we even gonna be sure that we love each other when it's right to say that? That's what I have to remember for next time around. Love is precious. Love always feels good. Doesn't always last and doesn't always come quick. So you have to be patient. You have to be respectful. You have to be appreciative of when it's ready to come. Works for me. It's really amazing how now it doesn't even feel that cold outside. Like it's like 45 degrees right now. 
and I don't really mind it at all. Now the air is not that humid, it's not that damp out here, and there's no wind. But like, if this was given to someone, if, if I had to feel this in July or August or even September, I'd be really unnerved, you know? But now, it's just naturally what it should be. J'adapte. Oh, I'm also learning um, Italian and French. I'm not really, I'm not really ready to show much of that yet on here beyond what I just did. If that's even how you say I adapt in French. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I am. And I'm happy with where I'm going with it. And yeah, going back to the relationship, you can bet that there were many moments where I was thinking about other people I might want to be with instead. You know, not to say that they were better or worse, but, um, if that's even coming to mind, and it becomes so insatiably part of what I'm thinking about. <laughs> if I get caught in a certain situation, how am I going to cope with it being that morally unlucky? Well, it's actually 50 degrees, but still, still. Um, but yeah, uh, I do say it like that because you might not think that that would be something you'd do, but <laughs> love is complicated and it can get unruly. And if you're not prepared, you might do something you don't think you would do, you know? And even more so, you might even think it's right to do, you know? Um, in fact, I know a prominent couple in the area that I'm in, um, in the scene that, uh, sprouted from another prominent couple that was in the scene that no longer exists because yes that occurred that transpired and you know it's there was a lot of judgment back then but not anymore you know love is complicated if you do seek someone else you might find yourself pursuing that ideally you don't and there's great encouragement not to. Um, and if you're monogamous, it's certainly not of consent to do that. Um, so be prepared. I wasn't prepared. And um, I wasn't gonna put myself in a situation where I not only was unprepared, but inept or disrespectful. So. In that sense, it's probably best that we, you know, cut things short. But the thing is, like, it didn't have to be cut short in the sense that if we had just taken our time, there would be nothing to cut short in the first place. There would only be sprouting. There would only be something to nurture eventually. It wouldn't be something that we're stuck in. And so, yeah, it's hard. And, you know, I met her daughter, too, so adding that into the mix is difficult, you know, for reasons that should be obvious. You know, losing a parent isn't easy, and, um, namely that, that age, and having no recollection of that parent isn't easy. And thinking you might get another parent only to see that parent slip away to you, um, that can't be easy either. So I just imagine, like, yeah difficult but as I said before love is complicated and um, you have to go with the tide so I'm ready for someone else and uh, I'm ready to be alone too um, uh, the sense of so bad but I am okay with where I'm at it's the point of this video and um, and I guess the point was also just to discuss certain things that were on my mind, namely this past relationship um, in the most respectful manner I could. But yeah, um, I am okay with where I'm at, with where I'm going, and I'm faithful. I have faith about 
what's to come. So, yeah.